Well, thank you very much, um, Elliot, Dr. Sorrell, for a very kind introduction. I am delighted to be here. I'm delighted to be a part of this effort. Those of you who know me know that I love meetings that have goals. You want to go somewhere, you want to establish something. Um, and, um, and that's the attitude I took for the Office of the Surgeon General. If we were going to release a report, the question was, so where is the report supposed to lead us? And that was certainly true of the mental health report. I bring greetings from the Satchel Health Leadership Institute at the Morehouse School of Medicine. I know some of you are very familiar with Morehouse, because I know back in the early days, um, there were many people from Africa who were involved with the development of Morehouse School of Medicine. And then we had students from Africa uh, who, who finished medical school in Morehouse and came back to Africa to provide leadership in various ways. So um, it's great for me to be here. But I want to say just a word about our leadership institute because I know that that's where you're going. going. One of the, one of the uh, leadership lessons that we like to talk about is the fact that leadership is a team sport. We have about 20 lessons. One is leadership as a team sport. And I'm big on team. I've been tracking Morehouse. Um, so I'm big on team. Leadership is about putting together the best team and figuring out a way to function as a team. So I hope that as you plan, as we plan uh, for the Institute, we will remember, and this is a global team, because you know, Africa is it's certainly a global continent without question. The roots uh, from here to America and, and all over the world, it's very deep. So, say you don't have an institute on them, an African institute, because they have very deep roots. And we're very pleased to be a part of that. So what is public health? And I don't know how you define it, but it's a very important definition. It is what we do collectively. What we as a society do together, collectively, to assure the conditions for people to be healthy. So that word conditions, which was a major part of the report on social determinants of health from WHO, uh, and I was on that commission, but the word conditions was our major definition of social determinants of health. But, and we'd like to take credit for that, but if you go back to 1988, the um, WHO, uh, or the Institute of Medicine, on public health, define public health as what we do as a society collectively to assure the conditions in which people can be helped. That's one of the ways to define the role of the surgeon general. It's how do we look at the research and expedite action to impact policy? That, that is the greatest contribution that the surgeon general makes now. In Jan January 2014, we celebrated the 50th anniversary of the Surgeon General's first report, Smoking and Health. 50 years. So the question we raised was what's happened in the 50 years since the first ever Surgeon General's report. And it was interesting, uh, Virginia Benjamin was Surgeon General at that time. And the report that was released was the largest report ever released as it reviewed the history of smoking and health in the United States. Among <coughs> other things, um, while about 20 million people had died from the effects of smoking between 1964 and 2014, uh, it was estimated that over 10 million lives had been saved because of the Surgeon General's report. Why? Because of all of the people who quit smoking and the people who um, decided not to begin smoking because of the Surgeon General's report. This is, um, I don't know how you define mental health. We define it from the standpoint of function and being concerned about whether people are able to be productive in their activities. Uh, what, 
that they are able to develop fulfilling relationships with other people, beginning with their family, where they can successfully cope with adversity and can be adapt to change. Uh, after the Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans, uh, we were asked, the Satchel Mission Institute and the National Center for Primary Care to help rebuild the health infrastructure in New Orleans. And one of the things that was very obvious was that depression had tripled in the population that was most affected by Katrina. It had gone from 10% to 30%. So we, we, had, we screened for depression. So I think adapting to change and coping with adversity is certainly one of the real tests of So what will it take to eliminate global health disparities, including mental health disparities? Well, I think it will take a global commitment invested in global leadership, such as the WHO treaty. I mean, I'm embarrassed to admit the United States did not sign that treaty. If you know what we've been dealing with in our Congress recently, the idea of signing something that would give authority of a body like WHO it's something that we've had trouble getting this Congress to agree to, but the United States financially supported the treaty. So global sharing of resources, including knowledge, uh, as demonstrated by the expanded program of immunization, one of the most successful stories that we've ever had in public health, immunization. And two, a global intervention strategy, HIVH, polio, TB. Global agreement on policies to protect all of those things are critical. Um, the McKinley model is, is what we call a strategy for policy implementation. Uh, it starts downstream, it starts with services, it starts with research. There are changes in the community, maybe at schools, maybe in parks, and then it gets upstream. Upstream is not a place, it's a function where policies are made. Uh, but then once policies are made, they have to be implemented. So it takes you right back down midstream and downstream. Because I've talked about the Affordable Care Act, and I'm really hoping that uh, Mr. Trump, who seems to be a little uncertain about what he's going to do about it, I hope that these three things will, will, will remain. Affordable Care Act will expand the health and substance use disorders, benefits and character, protection for over 62 million people. Now that assumed that every state would expand. Most health plans must now cover preventive services like depression screening for adults and behavioral assessments. Finally, starting in 2014, plans were not able to deny coverage. Well, let me close by reminding you of the motto of the Satchel Leadership Institute. And we have a prescription having to do with physical activity. But the motto is that in order to eliminate disparities in health and achieve health equity, we need leaders. We need leaders who care enough, know enough, will do enough, and leaders who will persevere for the job.